Authentication and authorization are distinct security processes in the world of identity and access management. Authentication uses passwords and other identification methods to confirm that users are who they say they are. By contrast, authorization assigns user permissions to resources that the user is allowed to access. In this Packet Tracer activity, Configure Access Control, you will configure authentication and authorization for network services including wireless network access, email, and FTP services. This activity opens in physical mode. However, you can complete it in logical mode. Also note that most tasks in this activity are graded. I will keep this grading window on top so we can watch the percentage increase as I complete tasks. Part 1. Configure and use AAA authentication credentials. Step 1. Configure user accounts on the AAA server. Navigate to Headquarters. And then click the wiring closet, which is the tall black server chassis in the bottom left corner. On the right rack, click AAA Radius Server, Services tab, and then AAA under Services. Turn on the AAA service. Under User Setup, add the usernames User1 and User2 with the password specified in the instruction. Step 2 is configure wireless authentication on HQ Laptop 1. Navigate back to HQ and click HQ Laptop 1. It is located two rooms to the right of the wiring closet. Click Config tab and then under Interface, click Wireless Zero. In the SSID box, type HQ-INT. In the Authentication area, click WPA2. In the User ID box, enter User1 and enter Pass User1 exclamation point in the Password box. In IP Configuration section, click DHCP. Wait a few moments for the DHCP offer to be accepted. Verify that HQ Laptop 1 received IP addressing and is assigned an IP address from the 192.168.50.0/24 network. At this point, it is important to note that Packet Tracer does not always converge quickly like this when configuring wireless access. If you are having issues, Refer to the note in the instructions for this step. Step 3 is configure wireless authentication on HQ Laptop 2. Click HQ Laptop 2, which is located in the top right hand corner of HQ. Repeat the previous steps to configure the wireless settings for HQ Laptop 2 using the User 2 credentials. Notice that sometimes it is necessary to toggle between DHCP and static to force DHCP to converge. Verify HQ Laptop 2 received IP addressing and is assigned an address in the 192.168.50.0/24 network. Part 2. Configure and use email services. Step 1 is activate email services and configure email user accounts. Navigate to the wiring closet. On the right side rack, click Mail Server, Services tab, and then Email under Services. Turn on both SMTP and POP3 services. Set the domain name to mail.cyberhq.com. Under User Setup, Enter the username and password combinations from the instructions. I have them copied here for easy access.
Step two is configure email clients. Navigate back to HQ and click PC 1-1, which is in the bottom corner. Click Desktop tab, Email. The Configure Mail settings should open. Enter your name as Suki. Email address is hquuser1 at mail.cyberhq.com. Incoming and outgoing email servers are both mail.cyberhq.com. Username is hquuser1. Password is Cisco123! Click Save. Use the information in the table in your instructions to configure email settings for 2-3, HQ Laptop 1, and NetAdmin. I have that information copied here. PC 2-3 is in the office below the conference room. The NetAdmin PC is in the wiring closet. Step 3 is send an email as Suki. On PC 1-1, click Compose. Compose an email to Ajulo at bruser1 at mail.cyberhq.com. Enter a subject and email message of your choice, and then click Send when finished. Note, Packet Tracer may take several seconds to converge before you see the Send Success message at the bottom of the window. Also note that Packet Tracer does not grade this step. Verify you have completed the step correctly by checking to see if Angelo has received the email. Navigate to Angelo's PC 2-3. Click Receive and read the email from Suki. Part 3. Configure and use FTP services. Step 1 is activate the FTP service. Navigate to the wiring closet. On the right side rack, click FTP Server, Services tab, and then FTP under Services. Turn on the FTP service. Step 2 is create the FTP user accounts. Under User Setup, enter the usernames, passwords, and privileges listed in the instructions. Click Add to add each user. Note, be sure the username Malia does not include the delete privileges. I have the FTP accounts copied here. Verify each user is correctly created and close the server. Step 3 is transfer files between NetAdmin and the FTP server. Click NetAdmin PC and then click Desktop Command Prompt. Enter the command FTP 192.168.75.2 to log in to the FTP server and then authenticate with the username Suki and password Cisco123. Enter the dir command to list the files on the FTP server. Use the get command to download a message.txt. Quit the FTP session. Close the command prompt, click text editor, and then file open. Open the downloaded file a message.txt. Greetings, you have successfully accessed the FTP server. Click File New. 
Type a message of your choice. Click File Save and save the new message as a message underscore new.txt. Close the text editor. Click Command Prompt and then log back in the FTP server as user Suki. Use the put command to upload a message underscore new.txt. Quit the FTP session. Step 4 is verify FTP user privileges are working as configured. Navigate back to HQ and click HQ Laptop 1. Close the mail browser and click Command Prompt. Log in to the FTP server at 192.168.75.2 with the username Malia and password Cisco123. Use the delete command to attempt to remove the newly uploaded file, a message underscore new dot txt. Notice that the permission is denied. Recall that the user Malia does not have delete rights. However, she does have rename rights. Use the rename command to attempt to change the name to a message underscore rename dot txt. and the file is successfully renamed. Quit the FTP session and close HQ Laptop 1. This completes the Packet Tracer activity configure access control. You can also verify that you have completed the activity by looking at check results.